Our next speaker has worked for the second most visited mountain in the world. What is that? Pikes Peak. Nice job. And I don't know. Sometimes people, as, as, as simple as it seems, sometimes we don't know that. So I'm really impressed that you guys knew that. So the first is, um, actually, I did look this up because I had a feeling somebody was going to ask me. It's in Japan. It's in Japan. Which one? It doesn't matter. That's right. Thank you, Alan. Yes. <laughs> Go Pikes Peak. All right. Pikes Peak America's Mountain is National Historic Landmark and welcomes the excess of 600,000 visit visitors annually. Jack is a former Air Force pilot and a professional engineer and is a manager of Pikes Peak America's Mountain Enterprise. And he's going to come up to present new design options for a new summit complex. So, join me in welcoming Jack on stage. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you, Yanni, for that introduction. An engineer shouldn't follow Babette, I'll tell you. So. <laughs> Experience our Colorado. If you have flown out of the Colorado Springs at the airport, you would notice this sign at the main exit as, we, as you left the airport. Um, Whoa, fast, okay. Uh, <laughs> but anyhow, we'll get on this. Uh, who owns the Summit House? We do. Well, actually, the city administers the operate. We have an operating permit administered by the, by the Forest Service, and the highway and structures are owned by the Forest Service. Our special use permit is for recreational travel to the Summit. Other uses, such as the Pikes Peak Hill Climb, are authorized through our annual operating plan. Pikes Peak Summit, the next 50 years. How many knew there were one time two summit houses up there? One on the right actually burned down in the current summit house, then was built 50 years ago to replace both. So therefore, we're using a 50-year time frame for our new, new summit. Five major stakeholders. The Forest Service is the owner. Three permittees, including the City of Colorado Springs, City Utilities, the Army. Fifth player is the Cog Railroad that has defined easements up there on the summit. We've had a robust public process and want to continue that. We've had to date two public meetings. We have a third scheduled for January. We're publishing an e-newsletter and we're soliciting design comments through the website shown. Pro project programming. Uh, currently, the interpretive area very lacking. We're going to increase that to 2,000 square feet. Design or dining and retail service would stay the same. Restrooms dramatically increasing. Uh, support facilities slightly decreasing for a total of about 27,000 square feet, increase of 50 percent. Uh, <laughs> look at that. See, let's go. <laughs> and you thought that was 15 seconds, didn't you? Okay. Siting options. The Forest Service has actually asked us to build on the eastern half of the summit so that we can restore and revegetate the western half. Therefore, we'll be looking at three sites, the southeast, the northeast, and then the northern. Design options being developed in the preliminary plans by the architect would be similar to this building, which is white, a lot of glazing in it. So if we get the next slide, oop, somehow my slide got this back there. Okay, uh, design options. Basically, we'll be parking for 200 visitors or 200, 200 uh, spaces, and then define circulation for the pedestrians. And the first option in the southeast corner, the building itself, one story, actually excavated into the mountain. The roof would actually be at ground level. You can use it as an observation deck. The cog entrance would be at the lower level. The second option in the northeast corner, we have a, a loop circulation for the, for the parking itself. The cog tracks would remain where they are located now. The building, two stories, and what you'd have with the broken roof lines is to mimic the mountain profile. The highway visitors would enter from the upper level. The cog visitors would enter from the lower level. The third option also in the northeast. In this one, we have a slight variation on the parking configuration. The Cog Railroad also would remain in the same location. 
This is actually our futuristic design. Many people think that it looks like an airfoil or a boat. It would be two stories. The highway visitors would enter from the upper level again, the cog from the lower level. The platform above the cog could create that titanic moment. <laughs> the fourth option is on the northern edge. and It's actually probably one of the most dramatic views that we have at the summit since the northern edge drops off several thousand feet. In this one, the cog tracks would have to be relocated. The building, two stories. All visitors would enter this one at the same level. The roof would become an observation deck. The slanted roof could become another observation deck. Just imagine, Pikes Peak ski jump. <laughs> Our timeline for the project, the environmental assessment and design completed in 2016. Construction in two phases, completed 18 or 19, with restoration in 2020. This has been a brief overview of our project. I hope I've piqued your interest and, <laughs> and will provide with further design through our website and provide some input to one of our most important projects in the Pikes Peak region.